In this recording, we look at an initial example of obtaining a partial fractions decomposition of a proper rational function, f of x, of form p of x on q of x for the original function. That is, it is one polynomial divided by another. And by a proper rational function, we mean that the degree of p of x, which is the highest power of x it contains, is less than the degree of q of x. So for instance f of x could be a quadratic function over a cubic function for example but not the other way around. And if you ever want to obtain partial fractions for an improper rational function where the degree of the numerator is greater than or equal to the degree of the denominator that is when degree of p of x is greater than degree of q of x you would first need to do long division to get a polynomial plus a proper rational function. In this case though we will focus on examples where it is already in the form of a proper rational function of this type. And what we do is first factorise q of x, the polynomial on the base of this, we factorise it into a product of linear and or irreducible quadratic factors and the form of the partial fractions representation will then depend on whether these are single linear factors, repeated linear factors, single irreducible quadratic factors or repeated irreducible quadratic factors. So over the course of several examples we will go through these cases and a combination of cases. In this first recording on this topic we will focus on the case where the denominator factorises into a series of single linear factors of form ax plus b and for each such factor there corresponds a partial fraction of form constant c divided by ax plus b. So let's see how this applies to an actual example. So here we are given an expression x squared divided by x minus 1 times x squared minus 5x plus 6. And we need to see whether this has been factorised as much as it can be. Clearly the x minus 1 is a linear factor, but this quadratic factor, x squared minus 5x plus 6, can we break that down any further? And the answer is yes we can x squared is x times x, 6 can be written as negative 3 times negative 2 and if we do that that will give the required middle term negative 5x. So how do we rewrite this in the form of partial fractions? Well We said that for each single linear factor we can rewrite this as a partial fraction with a constant divided by that linear factor and we in fact add these together when there are several of them. So that means we could rewrite this as a constant which you can give any name you want so I'll just call it a on the first linear factor x minus 1 plus another constant b divided by the second linear factor x minus 3 plus a third constant c divided by the third of the factors x minus 2 and we now need to find a, b and c and the easiest way to start is to do this by multiplying both sides by the denominator of the original expression on the left and when we do this a lot of cancellation will occur so in this example we'll write this out in full to see what happens. In this case the denominator of the expression on the left was x minus 1, x minus 3, x minus 2. So we'll multiply that by the whole expression. Then similarly we must do the same to both sides. So a divided by x minus 1 will also be multiplied by x minus 1 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. 
just write on the next line to allow a bit more space. Similarly, b divided by x minus 3 will be multiplied by x minus 1 times x minus 3 times x minus 2. And the same will happen to our last term, c divided by x minus 2. Again, will be multiplied by all of these terms. And initially this looks very complicated, but look at all the cancelling that happens with the term on the left we started with. All of those will cancel, simply leaving the numerator expression of x squared. With this first one, in terms of a, the x minus 1's cancel. With the term with b, the x minus 3's cancel. And with the term involving c, the x minus 2's cancel in this case meaning now that we can rewrite this much more simply as x squared equals a times x minus 3 by x minus 2 plus b times x minus 1 x minus 2 plus c times x minus 1 x minus 3. And there are different ways we can solve this to get the values of a, b and c. When they are all linear factors, given that this expression is true for all x, it is good to pick values of x that will actually eliminate some of the constants. So let's think first of all about what would happen. We have a factor x minus 1. If we put x equals 1 into this expression, 1 minus 1 is equal to 0. So both the second term here involving b on the right and the third term involving c on the right would become multiplied by 1 minus 1 is 0, meaning those terms would disappear if we put this in, allowing us to simply solve for a. So let's do that. The left will become 1 squared for x squared and the right will become a times 1 minus 3, 1 minus 2, plus b times 1 minus 1, 1 minus 2, plus c times 1 minus 1, 1 minus 3, replacing x everywhere with 1. And as we said, this one and that one, the 1 minus 1 part makes those whole terms go to 0. 1 squared is just 1. That's equal to a times negative 2 times negative 1. So that just implies that 1 is equal to 2a, which means that a is equal to a half. And it would be useful, going back to our original expression, if we could do a similar thing to find b and c. What other value of x could we put in here to eliminate some of these terms on the right? We've got a factor x minus 3 appearing a couple of times. So let's put in x equals 3 so that the terms involving that factor go to 0. So putting x equals 3 into that expression will give us 3 squared equals a times 3 minus 3, 3 minus 2, plus b times 3 minus 1, 3 minus 2, plus c times 3 minus 1, 3 minus 3. So 3 minus 3 is 0. So that eliminates the first term and the third term, leaving us with 3 squared is 9 on the left, equal to b times 2 times 1. Therefore, we can see that 9 is just equal to 2b. So b is equal to 9 divided by 2, or equivalently 4.5. And similarly now, to find the last of our unknown, c, we have x minus 2 factors in here, so putting in x equals 2 will get rid of those. That is, putting in x equals 2, is going to leave us with 2 squared equals a times 2 minus 3, 2 minus 2, plus b times 2 minus 1, 2 minus 2, plus c times 2 minus 1, 
2 minus 3. 2 minus 2 will make the first two terms on the right go 0, leaving us with 2 squared is 4, equal to c times 1 times negative 1. So that's going to leave us with 4 equals negative c, which implies c is negative 4. So summarising what we have found, we wanted to write our expression as shown here, a on x minus 1 plus b divided by x minus 3 plus c divided by x minus 2. And we have now found values of a is a half, b is 9 divided by 2, c is negative 4. So we simply can substitute those in to get our partial fractions representation which is going to give us a half divided by x minus 1 plus 9 on 2 divided by x minus 3 minus 4 divided by x minus 2. And if you wanted you could simplify that further. A half divided by x minus 1 is the same as 1 divided by 2 x minus 1. Similarly the second expression could be written 9 divided by 2 x minus 3 and our last expression, minus 4 on x minus 2. So this is an example of how we can rewrite a proper rational function as partial fractions, an application which is useful in areas such as anti-differentiation, differentiation and various other areas of mathematics where this form of expression is simpler to work with.